Well, hello there. I have some farmhouse home decor DIYs that I made. I can't wait to share with you. Used a couple of the new transfers from the IOD Summer 2023 collection, and I can't wait to share them with you. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, and let's get started. So for the first uh, DIYs here, I got some spring, it's from the spring shop. I did not pay $18.99. I think I got 50% off of that. In in any event, they were not uh, full price, but these are like little salad spoons, I guess. I, these are from Hobby Lobby. I failed to mention that first, but yeah, from Hobby Lobby, I grabbed them and I thought, okay, so the price is obviously really, really good. I can't pass that up. Now I got a whole bunch of goodies from Lori at miltonsdaughter.com. I got a lot of new stuff. So I got pretty much everything from the, the IOD 2023 summer collection. And then I got a lot of these DIY paints. So I'll go on over to Milton's Daughter. I get all my IOD stuff and then now my DIY stuff because I am now a new fan of DIY paint. I'm gonna show you guys wet distressing because that is my new favorite thing now. No more sanding, which will, I mean, you're still gonna see me do it. It's not like I have a huge collection or anything, but I got some more stuff coming, some brushes and some other paints, but um, I have never used it before. This is a clay based paint and you need to seal it. So I'm uses, this, this is not right here. This is not my first run because I did something previous to this to test it out. So this was my second time using this paint. Now for one of the salad spoons, I'm going to just paint the base of it here. And then for the second one, I'm going to paint the entire spoon. Now, as I was talking through all this and jibber jabbering like I do, um, I just wiped everything down. With this paint, I've learned and I've tried to do some research and looking it up. You need to make sure that your, your surfaces are as clean as possible. And then after um, a minute here, you'll see I taped off the top of the spoon. I wanted a better crisper line on the top of that. So I just went and got some masking tape and I'm painting around the back of that. I did two coats of each of these to get them a good solid color. And now that they're fully dry, now I'll tell you this DIY paint's clay-based, obviously I've mentioned that before. It is reactivated by water, which is why you need to seal it. And you're gonna see me do this here. So that's a good line I got. I took the masking tape off. So now we've got two dry spoons and we are ready to start distressing. Now wet distressing is something I hadn't tried before until until this is my second time. My first DIY, you're gonna see that one second in this video, that will be my test run. Now for here, I just grabbed a wet rag. Now I should have grabbed a bigger rag because I learned that you need to make sure that the pieces that you're using, it's like almost a clean rag each time, but look how easy this comes off. You control how your distressing looks a little bit easier than in my opinion, using a sanding block. I love this. This is my new favorite thing, which also enables me to have a little bit more patience because when this particular type of paint, we have to wait for it to dry. You have to, you have to be a little bit more attentive to it. If that's not your jam, by all means, keep on going with what you're doing. Now there are a bunch of other paints here, but I just kind of went at it to see how, how I was going to take some of this off. And on certain pieces, you'll see me, I, I put a little bit more concentration in one area because I wanted more of that pretty wood to come through. But with this uh, wet distressing, you can literally control your, your wearing st the spots where you want it to look worn at. And I love every second of that. I love this wet dist I like, I can't wait to just buy stuff and paint it and distress it. So I hope you guys are prepared for that because I'm telling you, this is my new thing. I'm going to find things, but I can't type hate that. I'm, I walk through my house thinking, hmm, oh, oh I'm going to take that, take that off the wall. I'm going to paint it. Look, do you ever do that? You were like, mm, let me see. It's time to, it's, it's time to redecorate. Let's, let's just try to repaint everything in the house. <laughs> yeah. You're going to see me with my cupboards taped off in the kitchen. I'll do it. I bet you one day. And if I do, I'll record it. I'll bring you guys with me. So here after everything's dried. Now I didn't wet distress all the way down. You can see it kind of has a white hazy look to it. That's because my rag was dirty. If you get used a new section of the rag each time, you will see more of that wood come through as you want it and intended it to. I probably need to use a bigger rag or even a towel um, or just rinse the rinse the, rinse the, uh, the towel out more. But I love how they turned out. So now they're dry and done, we're ready to go. I'm gonna put some transfers on. Lori sent me all of, look how beautiful these are. This is the summer 2023 collection. I got all of them. This one's called Maze Roses. Now these are all in the sections. I do not have a plan to use something this large, but I can take these and I love piecing things together. This one's called Elysium. Very pretty. Again, you get four sheets of a bigger piece, so you can match them up and put them on a larger piece, but I'm going to part them together. Now this one, the botanist, is gorgeous. Now this is pretty, but I again won't have anything this large. Now the middle piece I'll probably put together, but here on this garland area, I cannot wait to use that on some pieces. 
for today for our cute little spoons I'm going to be using this little packet here and I love it when they come this size it apparently took me a minute to get it out it's called the seed catalog I love this one I love the colors and this has a little bit of everything in it if you're if you're only just looking for one and this one is actually very affordable it's small but you get eight pages and you get a lot of different sizes colors and, and styles there it comes with a little uh, applicator tool that you use to rub the transfers on with and what I did here was I just kind of went out it to see how am I going to do this so I figured on one spoon I'll do the the decorating and the transfer on the front like in the scoop part and then on the other spoon I'm going to use the back of the spoon and then I already knew that I, on one of them I was going to uh, use like a D a D ring hanger to hang it on the wall and then the other one uh, and then this one that I just put the transfer on I was going to make a little uh, like a type of a jute hanger for it I couldn't I couldn't say no to it that's why also I decided to do something kind of different with both of them and now here our first spoon is, is my the transfer I'm cutting out here I thought that I wouldn't put the words on here I just wanted the florals from it so I'm painstakingly cutting around it but then in about like two seconds I decide that you know that would look really cute going up the handle so the ideas kind of pop in and you know the creativity just starts flowing while I'm, it's still in my head so I was like looking like showing look how perfectly I cut around it so you can still leave it in the book and use it on something else yeah and then like well hold on no that doesn't matter because Whitney you're gonna use it anyways yeah okay just cut it out okay yeah fine okay let's just take it perfect it's perfect looks so cute there so now I take my little scrapbooking scissors also known as fussy cutting if you guys are from that or if, you, if you're familiar with that that uh world of scrapbooking they're little tiny scissors they're just really thin they have like a sharp point on them you can hurt yourself so be careful <laughs> not that that's happened to me it's happened to me but anyways I felt like this little you know Jay Steckler seed company LTD looked perfect on the handle it looked very um what do you call that very I'm gonna say farmhouse but I was gonna say very antique like you know something you'd see you know in an antique store in Iowa or something something make me happy something off of like uh, what was that from was it American Pickers anybody watch American Pickers good show love when you see those that's the things that you can find in people's garages from years and years and years I'm trying to buy something new and make it look that old <laughs> but I love this style and that the, the seed catalog from this year's IOD collection it has a lot of that in there a lot of vintage but you can also mix it with more modern you can mix it with anything and you get away with it look as long as you like it look how perfect that looks it looks like it was meant to be now it's a little bit too pristine in my opinion so when we're done applying all these transfers here you're just going to see me piecing it together so I'm literally cutting it apart it was in its own you know rectangle this whole transfer was in its own perfect little rectangle and as you can see here nothing has to stay the way it is in that book you can take it rip it apart cut it here move it there and you can find a different way to apply it that works for you so that's why I love I love these rip-on transfers also I love IOD stuff man I can't help it it's such good quality it's so pretty it looks like it's been painted on there or you know professionally done I love everything about it everything about it they're good quality and the price is not that bad some other things are you know some of the IOD products can be up there in price but a lot of them I've been able to make them work on budgets before so trust me if you're frugal enough and you get to be able to use some coupons which again if you're on Lori's website now for some of the spring or it's not the new releases a lot of these these times these uh she has a code and it's whatnots 10 if you want to get on uh to see um, the goodies from her store right now um some of the new stuff isn't isn't eligible for the discounts now a lot of times this isn't Miss Lori's fault so please don't you know come for her <laughs> she's just she's at the the will of her um distributors or her her her, her uh, suppliers but she does give a loyalty program and that is honestly the best way because no matter what you buy from her store you can get you know you're working towards that discount towards uh, your next purchase so again use what nots 10 it gives you 10 percent off of discountable items and you'll know when you're in your cart which ones are uh, right now for this one right now the older IOD products are which you're going to see me use a, a couple stamp sets um, on my next DOI those ones will be discountable and I've I've used these stamp sets they're very very and I call them investment pieces because I've already used them in so many different uh creations whether you know you know st some of the stamp sets like especially if you're using letters and stuff you can pretty much figure out you can use these year-round they're 
universal. There we go. It's universal for most of the stuff you do. That's why I consider them investments. I don't mind paying a specific price for something that I know is good quality, will last, and I will use it many, many times. So, okay, stepping down off of my soapbox, back to this. Now, our little spoon on this one, I'm doing this in the actual scoopy part. And that's the, you know, technical term of that right there, scoopy part of the, sp of the spoon. It's a salad, salad spoons, I think. I think these are salad spoons. If you know what these are, tell me. If I'm right, I think they're salad spoons. But I'm deciding to do this one in the scoopy part of this spoon. And it was a little tricky getting that in there, but you'll see here. The, the transfer came off perfectly, and then I just used my scissors and then my applicator and my finger just to get them inside the little tongs there. And then um, the little piece I cut off to the side, I just kind of moved over to the left. That way it wasn't so much of a block in the middle. I had a little bit of a... I could take a piece of the transfer and kind of spread it out to the left and right. That way I have a perfect little spread there. And then, th again, rubbing on the transfer is the easiest thing. I love these transfers. You put them down, you apply your pressure, you take it off, you use the backer to burnish it, which means you're just basically rubbing it down to make sure all of it has a good adhesion or, or, or connection to the piece you're, you're putting the transfer on. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking my sanding block or my hand sander here. And then this is also a finger sander. Both of those are in my Amazon store. And I'm showing you here, I want to put some distressing on it because I want it to look like it's been old and it's been sitting there. So now we get to seal it. Lori sent me some liquid patina. Now this is basically what you would use is basically their the DIY version of Mod Podge. I love this stuff more than Mod Podge. Mod Podge and I aren't exactly best friends, but this particular stuff here is awesome. It dries quickly. It does about the same thing as, as Mod Podge does if I had to compare it. Now I haven't used it as a um, decoupage medium yet, but I am using it to seal this. I would have used wax. Now I used wax on my next DIY, but and this one worked out okay. But for this one, I didn't want to use wax because I'm going to hot glue some items on here and I didn't want to lose those. Um, I didn't want to lose any of that because hot glue is not going to stick. Wax causes issues with other things adhering to it. If you're not going to glue something to it or paint over it or anything like that, use the wax. But for this instance, all I did was I put the uh, liquid patina on the paint. So now we have a fully dry item and it did not take that long. I used my hair dryer. It's a little travel dryer I used to dry paints and stuff. And it dried great. It's not tacky. It's not sticky. I'm telling you guys, I got a beautiful, I got a good order and I love everything in it so far. Now here's a little D-ring I was telling you about. So this is how we're going to hang this little spoon. This one here is just going to get a simple piece of hardware on the back. Now I did have to use a little bit of elbow grease because this is a pretty thick handle on this spoon, but I did it without a power tool, just with, you know, sheer will and determination. And I was a little hungry, so I kind of wanted to get, get to lunch. So I may have just put a little bit of violence in there, but that was because I was hangry. But you'll see here, I, I don't know you know, if I kept it in or not. There was a couple takes, but you see me taking forever to find my screwdriver next door. I was like, come on, Whitney, you can do it. Get the screwdriver out. There we go. Okay. So I get the, the screw started and then I'm just having to, you got to put the proper leverage over it. So I had to stand up and really put my shoulder into it. But in any event, find a way to secure your, your little pieces here. If you should be able to run to Hobby Lobby, get the same spoons and, and duplicate this maybe by easier if you were able to drill a little hole in it. I am nothing if not craft lazy and not wanting to have to go get power tools. So what I'll probably end up doing is if someday if I get one, I will end up having something and it's going to stay. I'll end up getting a drill and it will stay in my craft room. That way I don't have to do it. But then it'll probably get, the batteries will go dead or something. And I'm like, man, and I'll still end up using a hand, you know, like a hand screwdriver. <laughs> Anyways, long story for that. So now I'm just going to put a couple little things here. So this is my ribbon junk bucket because my junk buckets have multiplied. They now have babies. So I have a regular junk bucket and then I have a junk bucket for ribbon remnants. Ribbon remnants. Say that 10 times real fast. <laughs> so these are pieces of ribbon. Now I can tell you that this was actually this mustard color, which I think is beautiful. It's a, it's like a stitched stitching ribbon. I've got that at craft outlet and that's normally a two and a half inch wide ribbon and I have cut it apart. Now here I found a piece of cheesecloth in there and I'm just kind of messing around with stuff. I cut the little mustard colored ribbon Normally it also is wired. So I pulled the wires off of each side and I cut that ribbon in half. So even now I'm taking this ribbon and making it even thinner. And then I dovetailed the ends of it and I wanted to make sure it didn't keep fraying. So I applied a little bit of far, a little bit of far to it to get those edges melted. So it stopped fraying. 
And then um, this little gingham piece here is like a darker green gingham. I know for a fact that that's a Dollar Tree. That's from a Dollar Tree spool that I had. Couldn't tell you if it was fall or not, but that's a, a just a piece of ribbon left over. And I wanted to show you here. I kind of pinch it in the middle to make it this little, you know, A-frame or V-shape. Kind of popped open a little bit, but just kind of pinch it on one side, put some glue in there. And I love the shape of this. So I'm not actually putting a loop on anything. I am not looping a bow. I'm not making a bow per se, but I'm going to put a little embellishment of ribbon on there. Like I love putting remnant pieces of ribbons on things. Now this actually is just pieces of, that I pulled off the end of a fraying strip of burlap. I've saved them. Now for this, I'm gonna take the green gamma and I'm going to just wrap it around. I, make, I am making a bow with the the little with the burlap pieces here so i just cinched it in the middle and then i put the gingham in the back and then i tied a knot around it right in the middle and that's how you do that we're going to glue this one down first and i didn't want to cover too much but i also you want to cover a little bit of everything guys it makes it look intentional but technically you you're you're intentionally making it look unintentional yeah <laughs> this is this is a Whitney's self-help 101. You intentionally want to make it look in, unintentional because you know what happens is these salad spoons sits out and it weathers in the, in the barn for years and it magically gets ribbon and bows and buttons on it. These wooden buttons I got probably on either. Yeah, I got them on Amazon and I felt that a cute little black button just kind of sent, you know, set it off. I don't know why. I just, I love how it all turns out. It's, you know, these, these things here, most of these are just Everything came from my junk bucket. It wasn't anything. I did not pull anything brand new off the shelf. Now our second, our second little spoon here, I'm doing a different kind of hanger to it. I want to put um, a jute cord towards the top of it. Now I have black and then I have this white color. This white color is, it was from Michael's. It was on clearance years ago, but it was thicker, but I didn't like the color next to the paint. So I decided to just stick with the black jute cord that I have. This black jute cord I got off of Amazon. It's listed in my Amazon store. So if you want to check that out, it's linked in the description and the pinned comment below. My Amazon store has a lot of the supplies you see me use. Yeah, should you want to take a peek at that, it is down there. And I do earn a small commission off of anything you may purchase. And that would make me happy. Because these days, I'm telling you, this crafter can take anything she can get. I need all the help I can get. So to make this little handle, this is, this is the part I'm leaving in real time. I am only gluing the end of this to the side of the spoon because we're going to make the actual hanger first and then we're going to take the cord back down the other side and wrap it around the, the handle and that's going to become our handle. And I, I did this once before on a video in the past on the lavender bundle with some larger Dollar Tree um, nautical rope and it looked it turned out beautiful so here i'm gauging how long i want that holder to be so i'm going to put the handle on my cutting mat here and use this as a as a measurement that's one square it's about an inch so i'm leaving an inch room for extra at the top now you see i put more glue here just to tack down the other side and now i'm going to take the same cord because we're not cutting it and i'm going to wrap it around the handle coming up those two pieces so you're basically wrapping it around the pieces that you glued to the handle so it becomes another, it's just a, another form of, of security to, to have it in there. And it's solid and it's cute. And it's it looks like one piece. So you just cut, cut it off on the back and then you can glue it down into the other wrap pieces and you don't see it. Even if you stick your finger in it while the glue is still somewhat hot, which I have done many times, you just get a pair of tweezers and like pull that off, you'll be fine. And now enters the junk, junk bucket one more time, our ribbon junk bucket. This is a, I don't, ask me why I, why did I save that? But I'm so happy I did. It is a chunk of burlap that is probably going to fall apart. Now, and I picked up that cheesecloth again. I must have really wanted it to become part of something. I don't know. And this is actually just a piece of eucalyptus that came off of a garland or a, a pick somewhere and more bows. So I just put this scrap piece of burlap, glued the side of a, of a eucalyptus piece on there, and then two bows. I mean, sorry, two bows, two buttons, and we're done. So again, the scrap burlap is technically my bow. And you don't have to do anything. Just glue a, a remnant piece of something that has been, and that cheesecloth would look really pretty on there too. But I think it was a little bit too light, light colored, but, or drop cloth or canvas or potato bat, you name it. Anything would look great on it. Cause I'm going for farmhouse distressed. I'm going for country. I'm going for just 
cute. I love these guys. Look at the quality of these transfers. They look like they've been painted on there. You know, they, they look like they've been on there and that wet distressing. I am in love with this Debbie's DIY paint, you guys. Ugh. And I've, I've got the eight ounce, uh, the, the, the smaller sizes, the eight ounce paint. It is a lot of paint. It's, it's very decent amount of paint. And the wet distressing is so neat and tidy. There's no sanding. There's no dust. I think that might be my new favorite thing. So going forward, you're still going to see a lot of my other stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to be 100% only one or the other, but I am in love with the wet distressing. So you're going to probably see this on many more projects. And then you'll probably see me seal more with wax than the patina, just because if you see here on my pictures, the, it does like Mod Podge give a little bit of a sheen or a shine to the top coat. It does. You can tell it's been top coated. Um, now, if you, you have to, to seal the transfers and this paint. So if you don't use that, remember you can use wax. So this is our, technically this was my first DIY, but now it's going to be the second in the video. So here's my first run with the DIY paint. Now this piece of wood, I got off of a box of box, a chunk of just scrap wood from Amazon. This is my gel stain also from Amazon. And you'll see here on the left, you see a wreath ring covered in some satin ribbon. Then you see some, some cotton balls. The cotton we're using, ignore the wreath ring and everything else, because this actually was a completed DIY and I disliked it so much that I ripped it apart the next day. So you're actually seeing the second go around, but the sign obviously stayed the way it was. So here is the first time I've used this Debbie's DIY paint. The color is called beadboard. It's a very pretty, like a creamy white color. It's more towards a white color, in my opinion, than it is a cream. There's no yellows to it. It's just a pretty white color. It's a soft white. So I stained the wood here with that gel stain first. Now don't use any wax because then obviously you're putting wax on something. Paint's not going to stick over the wax. So antique wax, uh, the Waverly antique wax is my favorite, but that gel stain color is very gorgeous in my opinion. So I let the gel stain dry just a little bit in between. And then now I put about a coat and a half. I only did basically one coat because I was, this is my first time. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. All the paint is dry now. So here is my first time wet distressing. So I have a rag that I cut apart. It's an old, we'll say garage rag or shop rag. And here's my first time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that came off so quickly and so easily. And you, you learn really quickly how much pressure you need to put down with your hands. And then you kind of just play around with it. And I'll show you in one point here, I felt like I took off too much paint. So then I used the hazy part to kind of put it back in there. And then I focused really and put more pressure in a couple spots just to get more of that brown to come through. Now remember, I put a whole coat of gel stain underneath here because I wanted more brown to come through. I want this to look like it had been out and it had had a hard life for many, many years before it decided to become a cute little sign <laughs> in, you know, see right there. See, you see me, I rubbed back over it with the rag. I felt like, I think I activated it too much, put a little bit too much water on it and look how the brown pops out now because I used a cleaner part of the rag and I put more pressure in those areas. So you can actually see the brown from the stained wood underneath come out. And I love this. I could not be happier. You guys have to try it. If you've never tried it, it is so much fun. And here are, these are older stamp sets. These are my favorite. This one is called Farmhand, my favorite stamp set to date for letters. And then this one is called Letterpress. This one, very universal, comes in handy because the letters are much smaller and you can use it on many different sizes and many different DIYs. My Farmhand one, they're larger letters but they're very, uh, very just, it, it screams farmhouse. You'll see the style. I've used them before in a previous DIY. I forgot what I spelled out, but it's just cute stuff. But here we're making a cotton arrangement. So obviously I'm going to play on words. That's how I do it. I got jokes always. And it's just, I can't just not joke. Now I'm using my archival ink. I got this off of Amazon. This one I'm using ground espresso color. Um, you'll see that in my Amazon shop should you need to, but it's just a very dark brown. It's a dark brown ink. And then now I'm just putting the word ball on here because we are going to have an arrangement with cotton balls in them. And so to use the double L, I'm using a, um, a clear backer that you can also get from Lori on Milton's Daughter. It's an it's a iron orchids uh, backer. Very easy. You could also use the cutting boards, the clear cutting boards from um, Dollar Tree or even just the plastic pieces that the actual stamps come on. I've done that too. And here I'm just going to put a, I was like, what can you say, Whitney? I mean, now I'm not sure if people understand because sometimes I'm thinking I have the most, I have like the best jokes and I'm, I'm just the greatest comedian ever. And I'm like, oh, maybe people don't say those things like I do. So 
you'll see in a second if I could hurry up and get these together. I got all the little letters out for the word have, okay? So I'm gonna say have, and I'm like, how do I wanna put this? Diagonally? No, I'm gonna put it up and down on the left side because I'm gonna make it look, I don't know, is this modern? Is this what the kids are doing these days? <laughs> so here I'm using the archival ink again in black this time. <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. And I'm gonna put the word have right here. Again, easiest thing, guys. Clean them off with baby baby wipes and put them back on and you will never. Also, get the envelopes for your IOD stamps. They are a lifesaver. Have a have a ball. Do you all get, you get that or am I weird? Have a ball. Just have a ball, meaning just have fun, right? I hope that makes sense. So here also, Lori sent me some DIY. This is the clear wax. I also have some white wax. I cannot wait to use it. I have some ideas and I've also been shown some things to use clear wax first. Then you can control the white wax distribution and how it is. I, I can't wait. I have so much. I have so much, guys. So the clear wax goes on like butter. Now this stuff is very smooth it's very soft you do not need that much it is i have other clear waxes that i've got from other brands i have the folk art one i have some other off-brand one that's in my amazon store and they're very thick and i don't know if they're drying out but they're very thick and hard this stuff is like butter it's beautiful very happy i have it so that's it for the sign my first little experiment with the diy paints and waxes and i i could i couldn't be happier i love it i love that farmhand letter god it's so cute so now <clears throat> my second idea, sorry, excuse me, I keep clearing my throat in you guys' ears, is Dollar Tree little wooden bucket, and I have a remnant, about six inches of a, a paint stick here from something from the past that was in my junk bucket, and our go-to, my love this color, Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm using the antique wax as a stain, and I'm just kind of, I'm going pretty heavy-handed, and I'm just making sure that I get that deep color on all of it. I want all of it there. I want it to be nice and pretty brown. And I'm actually saturating the creases in this little Dollar Tree uh, wooden bin here because I don't like when you can see the raw wood in the middle. So I'm actually purposely putting a decent amount in those little creases that I know I'm not going to be able to wipe out. And I wanted it that way. So here you'll see me load it up just in that area and then use the rest of the baby wipe or... Yeah, the rest of the baby wipe to just kind of spread it out and then getting all the inside pieces and the edges now i get a fresh baby wipe out here and i want to show you what to do i love the color of this but this one particularly is a little bit too dark so i use a fresh baby wipe and look how that happens now in person as i was watching myself it comes off a lot better you're able to see it more than right now it's showing up on camera and even then i don't think that the pictures did this one justice because when I started to actually construct it and put the main pieces together, I got that butterfly feeling and I was just like, this is great. I'm so glad I ripped the other thing apart. It was it was a wreath and it was not cute, guys. It just didn't look farmhouse. It just looked weird. But this right here made me so happy. So we're going to use the paint stick as a, uh, a, um, a sign and we're going to pop that into the styrofoam here. This is a half of a block. It was a leftover piece of a Dollar Tree block of styrofoam. So cut a, cut a block of styrofoam in half and we're gonna turn our sign into a standing sign. I left the ruler portion showing because I think it screams country, farmhouse, reused, repurposed, has a new life. I like when weird things show like that. I like when broken pieces are a focal point. I like when you can take something old and broken and reused and make it part of something beautiful. And I purposely did that. If you don't want to have your little paint stick line show, then please go ahead and hide them. I want mine to show. I am not keeping any secrets. This was a paint stick. Look how cute it is. <laughs> I used my um, staple gun, just applied some staples, a little bit of hot glue. Then I actually had to cut this into like more of a steak thing just because it wasn't really pushing into the styrofoam so easily. And that's the premise of our little box here. Now, I got a new bag of Spanish moss. I got the biggest one Hobby Lobby has. It is a big old bag and it was only $8. Did not pay $8 for it. It was on sale at the time I bought it, but I can't remember how much that was. So anyways, I love this Spanish moss. It's very fluffy. It's a good quality. Even if you bought four bags, what is that? It's five bucks, right? Four bags at $1.25. You're talking about $5. You're not going to get even half of the amount of this large bag from Hobby Lobby. So just remember, sometimes, unless you're going for convenience because you're already there, it, you're not always getting a good deal on certain things. I just, I'm just not a fan of the Dollar Tree Spanish Moss. Don't like it. This stuff is so pretty. Now, this by itself is cute, but it doesn't make sense because there's no cotton there. So 
I love that. So this obviously came from Dollar Tree as well. I got it, I think, last year, but I have seen it off and on. Otherwise, Hobby Lobby does have stems of cotton. You can buy the cotton balls on a stem year round. I've also gotten wreaths before. Now, I'm showing you in real time more on this one because this kind of just happened by accident. And I'm telling you right when that feeling happened, I'll show you, I'll tell you in a second. So I just kind of popped this first stem in and here I curved it around. And I was like, well, let me curve it around the front of the sign to see if it can still see the sign. Oh my goodness. Is this, yep, yep. And then I'm like, okay, let me curve it some more. So I'm just bending it more just to make sure I can keep that curve I had because it was super cute. So I'm purposefully bending it, twisting the bottom. I'm gonna stuff that into the star foam. Now, I don't think I glued the bottom of that in. Some of these things I glued in, some of them I didn't. I think I only glued in two. And I knew right there in an instance, look at that. Oh, that's where the butterflies happened. That's why I showed you. If I, if you ever see me stop and show you to you, that's the crafty butterflies right there. That's the happiness that's coming in. So I knew I didn't want it to move. I took my stapler. I had to do it off camera so I could put the edge of the table of the sign on the table so I had leverage. And I stapled the back of that there. Now I had one other longer piece of cotton that I hadn't cut up yet. So I had basically three stems total are in this particular arrangement. That one I put one staple on, tack that in there. And what I'm do here is I'm gonna cover up these staples with a little bit more Spanish moss. These don't look intentional. Now I was gonna cover these up here on the back of the, the little piece that we're using, like a little signpost. But I thought, you know, if you see the back of it, you're gonna know that it's a sign. So it needs to be secured somewhere. So I felt that that was okay. For some reason, the ones on the cotton are not okay, but the ones on the back of the sign post are okay. Does, I mean, that's how my brain works. And then I just popped a little piece of a, a two piece that I had cut in half from another one right up front. And now this is a little bundle of some green and whitish looking florally flowery greeny deals. You know, again, technical terms, professional technical terms. You can look those up in any botanist journal, green and white dealy doos. Uh, that's an old spring pick from Michael's from so long ago. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just find something complimentary that looks good. Boxwood would look great in there, anything. And I mean, I couldn't be happier. This was, this, this turned out so much better that I'm, I'm happy. I ripped the other one apart because you know, you just feel like you've looked at something you made for a couple days and you come back to it and you're like, you know what? It's just not blowing my skirt up. <laughs> just ain't blowing my craft skirt <laughs> for lack of a better term. Sorry if that's offensive, but if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? It's just not, it's just not doing it for me. I got to rip it apart. And I had such a good time making that sign. I was not going to let that sign go to waste. I wanted you guys to see it. I also wanted you guys to see that investment pieces with some of these stamp sets are absolutely worth it. This particular uh, set here, awesome. And again, if you use uh, Whatnots 10, when you get to Milton Daughters, miltonsdaughter.com, you do some repeat business. She's got some other stuff there too, guys, not just IOD stuff. She's got some decoupage papers. She's got other paints, brushes. There was a bunch of stuff on her website. Go check it out. I will have it linked in the description and in my first pinned comment as well. So you could take a look at her stuff and just let her know that I sent you if you, if you do, if you, if you, if you chat with her, but you can always email her or call her. She's a, just a wonderful human being. And um, she has most, she's an IOD stockist, so she has a lot of their stuff. And that DIY paint, I cannot wait to get elbow deep in more of it. You guys are going to see that going forward. I got more stuff planned, more videos coming. I cannot wait. I love them. Tell me what you guys think and tell me what you would have done. Uh, any hiccups in the road, anything like that. Have you used IOD stuff before? Are any of you in or have you used DIY paints? I have always been habitual, just whatever paint I get my hands on, I use. So... This was my first experiment. I got sent it and I absolutely love it. So I'm happy. So I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I have a coffee page and a few of you have still been donating, even though I am on a small hiatus. I am back now. I will have more videos to come and some updates for you. So with all that being said, I love you guys more than I can possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.